Support for this podcast comes from Smart Recruiters. Smart Recruiters is your all-in-one platform for faster, smarter hiring, making recruiting easy and effortless. Smart Recruiters are making some big changes, revamping their user experience, adding AI features and refreshing the UI. I know from experience that they truly are a company that really values the recruiter and the practitioner. They understand the intricacies of the recruiting business, and this has always been reflected in their functionality and customer support. So it's exciting to hear that they're making a bunch of updates. If you're ready to be part of the future of talent acquisition, head over to smartrecruiters.com and find out what they're up to. Trust me, your team and your future hires will thank you. There's been more of scientific discovery, more of technical advancement and material progress in your lifetime and mine than in all the ages of history. Hi there. Welcome to episode 648 of Recruiting Future with me, Matt Alder. Over the last few weeks, many established software vendors have launched AI augmented products, helping us move past the hype and get a much more hands-on view of what AI means for talent acquisition. There is still a massive amount of unknowns, but it is evident that AI is the chief catalyst in what is now an unstoppable transformation of TA and the broader talent function. AI and automation fundamentally alter the speed and scale at which TA can operate, constantly pushing the boundaries of what's possible. So what does this mean for TA leaders and practitioners right now? How prepared are organisations for this level of transformation? And how can TA raise its game to drive more value for the organisation? This week, my guests are Dr Swathi Palasamundram, Enterprise Business Architect at Bosch, and Nazim Unlu, Global People and Organisational Lead at Novartis. Both interviews were recorded at Smart Recruiter's Hiring Success event in Amsterdam in September. Swathi and Nazim share insights that reveal why the transformation of talent acquisition is truly unstoppable, and how TA leaders can harness this momentum to not only keep pace, but to lead the way. Hi Swathi, and welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Matt, for having me here. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Please could you just introduce yourself and tell everyone what you do. Um, so I am Dr. Swati Palasamutram and I work as an enterprise business architect at Bosch. And my responsibility is basically IT strategy in HR. And I get to work on a lot of cool topics. So be it AI or be it gen AI or be it process automation or digitalization and stuff like that. And I have around 10 plus years of experience, um, 12 to be really very, very precise, and 10 years of experience in HR domain. And I have worked across the entire HR IT uh, landscape, let's put it that way. I started my journey with talent management, and then I slowly moved on to talent acquisition skills and being a business architect. And uh, yeah, off lately, I have the role of an enterprise business architect. So uh, lots of stuff. And as you say, right across the, the whole kind of a HR function there, how do you see talent acquisition? How, how do you kind of break talent acquisition down and see what its function is within within that sort of whole? For me, talent acquisition is very, very close to my heart. Why? Because I kind of uh, set up the recruiting ecosystem at Bosch. So I was part of the team that introduced our applicant tracking system. So that is smart recruiters. And then I bought on the candidate relationship management uh, solution. And then we also implemented AI for screening and sorting. That is Hyatt Score, one of the vendors that Smart Recruiters very closely is associated with. So I am within my hire to retire journey. I have a very uh, soft spot for talent acquisition, but I guess keeping uh, my personal bias um, aside, what's very interesting is you need to have the right kind of people in the organization to be able to take the organization forward. And for that, uh, I'm very much aware of the discussions that we are having in regards to Uh, process automation or AI or how it could be a game changer. But at the same time, there is some kind of human element that is involved. Uh, You cannot replace all of the jobs by AI. So uh, we need to have the right kind of people. And for me, 
these are the people that is going to define the strength of the organization that is going to help the organization realize its mission or vision statement so they are very very instrumental uh, and yeah it's the key for the success both ways you know so i being part of the organization i also get to learn a lot uh, and the organization as well leverages on my skill set and what i bring to the table the human aspect is kind of really important i think we'll sort of circle back and uh, talk about that a little bit later but let's drill into that that ai part of it how is AI currently being used in talent acquisition? What are you seeing as the use cases at the moment? I actually did a very interesting exercise a couple of weeks ago where I wrote down on a piece of paper the end-to-end hiring process and I said, okay, uh, this is step where we could automate. This is the step where we could a- introduce AI. So this is an activity I did and after that I kind of resonated it with business leaders as well as stakeholders within the organization and somehow 90% of what I had written written down is what the business is also asking. So we can start with screening as well as sorting, you know, depending on uh, the volume of candidates that you're kind of processing. So uh, organizations as well as recruiters will be very, very happy to leverage on an AI solution to be able to sort that entire bunch of candidates that they get. And once the algorithm is able to tell this is your top five or top six, then comes a human element of wanting to interact with the person and trying to fit if this person matches what we are looking at from an organization perspective. Yeah, So I guess we are not yet there uh, within the talent acquisition space where we can leverage on large language models for you to mimic a human screening. And then probably once we start working in this area, it would be very interesting to compare the results of how a gen AI is kind of uh, screening a profile versus how I as a recruiter would do it. And then that it's a different discussion altogether. But since we are not there, so I would say at least at the first step, it's very interesting to let AI do it. And then comes the human element of me wanting to talk to the candidate and trying to understand if he's a better fit or not. In your presentation earlier, you were distinguishing between automation and AI because, um, and you weren't the only person who pointed out this that that this morning, that particularly in this sector, they tend to just kind of mould into one and people talk about, um, uh, talk about automation very often with technologies that have been around for five or 10, five or 10 years. But yeah, tell us more about your, your sort of perspective on that. There are a lot of... Um how do I say service providers and there is also technology that is in and around the area of automation but for me when I'm talking about automation I'm actually looking at more inbuilt features and functionalities within the system so here it's more in-system intelligence and this can work on um, when you leverage on the data that is already existing in the system yeah and this for me is actually a game changer because vendors are actually having solutions to support a particular process and there is a lot of process related data that goes actually untapped. You have candidate data, you have job data, but then there is process related data that's resulting of an interaction between the job and the candidate that could be as simple as, you know, the responses that the candidate gave in an interview or the feedback that the hiring team gave for a particular candidate or the questions that were asked from the interview. And there is so much of analysis that you could do and you could feed pack the loop to did you write your job description properly did you ask the right questions in an interview was did you evaluate so for me all of this is where you can leverage on you know ai to be able to give you the results and then automate certain processes in regards to next step or even automation in regards to give insights to the hiring team so this is why I said in my presentation earlier as well that we interchangeably use process automation as well as AI. And then we have to make up our mind where are we going to use process automation and where is AI? You also talked about um, readiness in terms of where people are on this kind of on this kind of journey. And you, you did something I've not seen anyone do before, which is to kind of split that down geographically. Um, just give us the some of the highlights of that, about what some of the, the sort of the key differences is are across different continents or how that works. This was a very interesting slide and I guess I was discussing with a colleague of mine before I came down to the conference and I was asking uh, that person what would be interesting for him to understand if somebody is talking about AI in talent acquisition and it was basically his idea where he said it would be so interesting if he could have uh, uh, an overview of the readiness from the world uh, if they are ready to leverage on AI or not and this was the initial discussion 
for me to put this thought up. And then I did a lot of research and I did talk to a lot of customers that we are working with as well. And it was very, very clear that North America or the Americas is more open in regards to advanced AI integration. And here, when we are talking about advanced AI integration, it's actually more on data because they have a very good recruiting ecosystem and they are able to connect the data, create intelligence out of it. And this is somehow baked into their processes as well as their solutions. This is what I actually mean by advanced AI integration. And the second point is also that they focus a lot on keywords like uh, inclusion as well as diversity and so on and so forth. Sometimes when you as a recruiter is writing up a job description, not necessarily that, you know, you have the right choice of words by which you would like to add and so on and so forth. But then leveraging on AI and then saying that, you know, please make this job at description in such a way that it uh, talks to inclusion, talks to the diverse community, then it picks up really good keywords, to be very honest. And this for me is very, very evident in the Americas. And then when you come to uh, Europe, we are still very, very uh, toying with the idea of whether we would like to have AI within our processes. And it's more in the regards of being compliant, you know, being ethical. And then we would like to look at the very obvious things of, yes, uh, there is a match between the skills. No, there is no match between the skills and so on and so forth. And then when you look at the Asia Pacific, it's a total game changer because you have so many candidates that apply to the jobs and then in this regard, they are okay that the machine takes over the basic screening. They're okay that the machine is moving a candidate from status X to Y, you know. And when you look at uh, New Zealand and Australia, they also would like to play safe within the uh, in, within the uh, areas of compliance as well as ethical and they are having a dearth of skills so they're okay to have remote hiring and for that they need information in regards to which skill is available where and all of this is where they leverage either on AI or process automation or the different insights that are available in the market as such. I find that fascinating in terms of just the, the context that's kind of just setting that so as you say Asia just you know far too many applications to deal with um, Europe very much about regulation so it's it's interesting that it's not kind of being applied as consistently as perhaps we think it is because of particularly things around the different candidate behaviors as well i think is really interesting i think let's talk a little bit more about um the, the candidate side of things because you were kind of flagging up the the opportunity to give personalized candidate experiences which i think which is a a topic dear to my dear to my heart how do you see that working what is that i put this I put those topics uh, on the agenda on purpose. Why? Because uh, I just wanted to give to the audience a feeling that just because we are talking about AI and personalized, uh, sorry, process automation doesn't mean that you remove uh, the human as well as the personal experience of candidates, you know. And then two or three examples that I was thinking about was um, I need to be able to write a motivation in regards to why I'm applying for this job. And even if you look at smart recruiters, the e-recruiting process, yes, yeah, so when I'm applying for a job, as an applicant towards the end, I need to write a note to the hiring manager in regards to why I'm suitable for this job. Yeah. So this was one interesting idea that when I was going through end to end the process, I was like, oh, how cool it would be that I as a candidate, you know, can get a proposal. And for me, this is the machine uh, augmenting my um, process or my abilities to be able to provide a proposal because at the end of the day, it is me as a candidate who's going to take a decision if I am going to keep the proposal for the system or I'm going to just overwrite it. Yeah. And the other personalized uh, use case that I was thinking about was rejections. Yeah. So every one of us have standard templates that you send irrespective of whether you're hiring a junior position, middle management position or even a senior management position. So thank you so much for the interest and blah, blah, blah. But then uh, you actually have the data in the system, like exactly in which step he was rejected, you know, was it in review, was it after an interview, you know, and all of this information is so useful that you can ask an AI to review this information and come up with a very personalized rejection email. So, I, you know, I'm always thinking I as a candidate when I know why I was rejected and give me some more insights into it. It's so helpful for me the next time. And all of these are the human elements. You see, it's always a combination of using the machine to be able to do something for you. But at the end of the day, it's 
the human touch that we are able to get. And this is a very interesting thought, which I don't think most of us are thinking in this direction. It also kind of illustrates the, uh, you know, the, the kind of the journey that we're on and um, how far a lot of organizations have, have got to go to even be thinking in the right way to, to deal with what's going on. So I, I suppose then as a, as a kind of a final question, what would your advice be to a talent acquisition leader who's looking at all of this and, you know, kind of wants to make these sort of changes? Um, you know, what, what should they be focusing on? To, to, to kind of make this happen and really get the full benefits of um, the AI can bring? Yeah, so first they have to invest in the right kind of infrastructure because it is money and the business should be ready to invest in it because when you have the right kind of infrastructure, then you can realize your goals sooner than faster. And you need to be able to see if you have the right people working on these tools to be able to get the intended results, you know? And sometimes these are some tough decisions that the talent acquisition leaders have to make. So, uh, and they must be ready to make. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you, Matt, for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Hi, Nazim, and welcome to the podcast. Hello. Hi, Matt. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Please, could you introduce yourself and tell everyone what you do? My name is Nazim. Uh, I work for No Artist Global uh, in the HR role where that I'm leading the R&D global accounts and supporting the HR transformation. And as well as that, I have like a, a 15 plus years of experience in the HR field, which I did have work in the different part of the world and support in and out different part of the businesses. Uh, so that the currently that I'm also like focusing on that, how to even prepare the HR function for the future and the implications of the AI and technology. And of course, that which is critical as well, that how that employee experience look like for the future, of course. You were talking on stage at the Hiring Success event about this and about the sort of the questions that people need to ask around TA and HR transformation. What do you think the, the biggest challenges are when it comes to TA HR transformation at the moment? When I started my HR career, which was uh, the roles were pretty HR generalist type of roles that you were doing and you were following the policies and procedures. And the client groups also expect you to follow the procedures and do the administration thing. But now the currently how that the whole function evolved, uh, it is in a very interesting place, if I must say, because uh, they have the value proposition, unique selling proposition is not super clear. Um, there is a big uh, impact and there is a big disruption already happened by the technology. Uh, in the meantime, that if you think about all the business in globally, how it's also disrupted the technology, uh, it should also that need to balance and adjust with the current uh, situation. But uh, however, in the meantime, uh, HR colleagues are, or TA colleagues, which is in the same game, having a super fear of that how to adapt to technology, how can get the support the technology turn to be a muscle or critical capability that they can use for. And it, it's not easy, honestly. When I met and chat with several uh, human resources professionals all around the world, everybody has these this questions about that. Okay, what will the future look like? How can we prepare ourselves? Technology is here, but we even didn't realize yet that how that our roles going to change. So it's not easy in terms of like that, especially when you are inside of the game and you know better than me about this technology and AI, Matt. I think it is not a, like a super simple structure. Tell us more about what you think the potential that AI has for, for, for TA and HR. In my experience and even that my even that uh, research and discussion as well with the whole the tech providers, I think there is a huge, uh, big, first of all, opportunity is in the hands of HR and the TA function. Uh, what is this? It is the really that a clear administrative and the data management perspective speed. And if you think about any HR department, and HR departments are heavily in the under corporate functions or general administration, where that 
workforce or any kind of headcount is always limited, right? Because you're not generating money and you don't get enough any kind of resources. But now that within the power of the AI and technology, we do have a chance to even uh, to get a support, especially with the repetitive tasks and administrative tasks that we are really spending a lot of time. Uh, so again, the question is that for $1 million level, so what will you do when you have extra time so that you will create a real business value? I think that that's a good question that even that we need to be must ask ourselves on the TA and HR function. Uh, but what I believe, which is also close to my heart, and I did speak several times in many different platforms as well, uh, I like the democracy, and uh, which is an interesting part of the humanistic uh, style as well. How can AI support the process of the human resources and that human resources can be more democratic and egalitarian? This is really that very critical where that we can, I believe, that to create the most uh, significant value that nobody can replace. Uh, because if you think about any TA process or any HR process, let's talk about the uh, promotion or that applying any role in outside, there are tons of bias is over there, right? And the, the role of the TA leader is very critical that how can you really set the process super clean, democratic, egalitarian, and also accessible and inclusive for everybody. This is an amazing role. But when it comes to reality, as always, somebody can intervene with the networking, references, somebody's friend. So what you had, the value that you create as a, a solution or an, an, an end result is not really, really that the sound super satisfactory for all parties. So what I believe, the power of the usage of data, AI, technology, with the right, of course, tools, uh, can make HR and TA function more human than ever. And what I believe, which is we never discussed this, the power of TA, talent acquisition function, going to be really increased with the power of the data, uh, heavily that the companies are focusing only talent management, which is makes sense because the cost perspective, if you invest more in talent management and promotion internally, uh, it increases the culture, engagement, and of course, then you doesn't you don't need to have any kind of like extra cost for the uh, headhunting or any kind of role finding. But what is missing? Uh, the real market data and the value proposition of the real candidate can find a way, even that they before uh, joining the company, which is again any strategic future part of OTA, in my view going to be expanded uh, by the power of data, uh, which is connect with the skills. Uh, because if you think about the skills management, we are discussing about the future skills, but the skills are changing super rapid and very high in demand. So you never even that being sure that what skills needed during the even that you start the one tell the acquisition process, in three months, it's changing as well. I mean, very, very hard. So in this context, how can you create a robust, strong bridge between TA, which is very good with the external focus, can feed the internal talent management by hiring the right fit candidate, which can be, again, you know, this T-shaped profiles, right, which is a, like interesting uh, discussion, uh, so that the TA value creates a, a strong, robust, uh, a good efficiency in the whole human resources function. I do believe that you're going to be need to be focused more on the TA uh, and hopefully that uh, the TA uh, leaders, TA professionals has now more and more strategic time for themselves uh, and they will, they are, they use their real power, which is empathy, intuition and finding the right people for the right uh, roles. Uh, I, I'm very optimistic and I'm very positive about that. Uh, and I'm uh, thinking about as well that how can we will be even more and more disruptive on the TA part so that it can change the value proposition. 
uh, unfortunately, it is a bit like uh, not the right venue that even that on the uh, companies so far. And, and that's what I really loved about your presentation. It was that optimistic sense that actually AI gives the opportunity for TA to prove its value and to give it that visibility in the business and be really, really successful at delivering that kind of critical talent strategy role. So um, yeah, no, 100%. It was great to hear people talking like that. As a kind of a final question, there were there were lots of sort of takeaways from from your from your presentation and the and the interaction with the with the audience. What would be your sort of top takeaways? What's the best advice you can give to TA leaders right now who are sort of starting to go through what's going to be a very disruptive transformational process? For me, really, that the critical part is that learning continuously is pretty pretty critical for everybody, by the way, not only TA or HR or business, uh, the, the, the speed of the transformation because of the technology is really unstoppable. Stoppable. So you can't have a chance to organize a, a slide deck and share with your clients that this is my change management strategy. You need to rapidly pivot in terms of like that, what is needs to be which is automatically coming in as a discussion. I think George Burson is saying this very clearly. HR, TA needs to focus on that. Rather than the solutions, they need to focus on the problems to be solved in the business. Then there will be like a value proposition comes to be reality for the HR. Uh, so for that, learning continuously and asking the right questions is very critical. Um, data literacy, I'm sharing this every time. Uh, in HR, we are a bit like uh, shy and have a fear when it comes to data. And and in this context, with the data, AI, uh, our role in TA and HR is really evolving uh, like a, a, a thing about a orchestrator, collaborator who can read the right data insights and create actionable results for the business. So for this, you need to not shy away to understand the HR analytics, people analytics. So please try to learn this. Mm. Other part is that more being really uh, embracing the change and of course that not forgetting about advocating for the people, right? Uh, during the, my uh, presentation, I did ask questions which is one question was like that, what aspects of your job do you believe that AI cannot replace? And, and that was a super clear moment that all the TA leaders, they got this super clearly. Empathy, human touch, emotions. This is the real TA and HR capabilities, really that the AI and tech cannot replace. So which means that we need to be more and more ever humanistic, human orient oriented uh, for being that, even being the more creative. Yeah, these are like a more takeaways. Uh, I'm, again, as we discussed, I'm very optimistic. And I believe that if we have the right arguments uh, in the right moment, uh, technology will really support the, uh, the whole TA and HR function possibly. Nazim, thank you very much for talking to me. My thanks to Swafi and Nazim. You can follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can search all the past episodes at recruitingfuture.com. On that site, you can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter, Recruiting Future Feast, and get the inside track about everything that's coming up on the show. Thanks very much for listening. I'll be back next time. And I hope you'll join me. This is my show.